Hey everybody, Corey from AquariumCoop.com. Today, we're gonna go around the store and take a look at all the fish. But first, I wanna show you guys this food. Sarah Onip tabs. We used to sell hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these a month. And we haven't really been selling any because I never show you guys. So today, we're doing all of the tanks with the Sarah Onip tab in there so you can see how the fish like it. And we get a good look at the fish. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. First up in this tank, we've got some rainbow snakeskin guppies eaten there with some, uh, I think it's Lor Lor oh, Loretto tetras, I was going to say Lorotoensis, but the Loretta te Loretto tetras and a bunch of coolie loaches. And they kind of just eat on that and as it dissolves, if they don't catch it all, then the coolie loaches will get it. And we've got autos and some strawberry bettas hidden around somewhere in that tank as well. Up top. We've got some Japanese blue multigrass guppies along with some orange hatchet danios. And they're all just at the feeding Sarah Onip tab there. We've also got the pencil fish. Next, we've got a bunch of Odessa barbs. Great looking fish, nice and red. These are the males. And they're just picking at that nonstop. Classic guppy tank. Love it. And the good thing about the Sarah Onip tabs is they have like um, blood worms, krill, all that good stuff in it already, so that's why they attack it so much. Next up, we've got sword tails. And they're just doing their little, I'm gonna pick at that thing like they do. Got the Java fern. If you order the large, well, not even large, but the Java fern on wood, that'd be a sample of what you get. Over here, we've got a bunch of tiger endlers. Females are eating, males are behind them, and clown loaches down below. This is a cool tank right here. I don't care what, what anyone says. We've got the uh, dwarf garamis or the thick lip garami pecking away at this thing. That's a sight to be, you know. Sarah, if you're listening, you should sponsor this video because this is an amazing sight right here. And then you've got all the red ember tetras. We've got some panda log suckers. A bristle nose and some zebra tetras in there, but this right here, man, that's a good looking, good looking shot. Up top, we've got the silver tip tetras, and they got scared. I'm gonna move the camera back because they got scared the minute I put it on them, but they'll get back up there. They're real feisty. One of my favorite, favorite schooling fish. I've got a bunch in my wife's tank right now. And I'm looking to add some. I don't know quite what I'm going to add. I'm thinking about adding some of those Odessa barbs, but I need a splash of color. And I want something that's going to eat a little bit of algae. Those Odessa barbs might be the ticket. But yeah, as I step back a little bit, I'll zoom in so you guys can see the feeding frenzy. But they love it too. Down low, we've got a few more garamis. Got some Apistos, the McMaster Eye, Rednecks, and we've got some Red Sword Tails. And then we've got some Bristle Nose down low. Next up, we've got Dwarf Chain Loaches, Apistogramma, Agazizii, Fire Reds, and some Assorted Angels. Lots of Dwarf Chain Loaches. And the uh, Lemon Tetra. Up top, we have a ton of Siamese Algae Eaters. They're just all letting it fall down to the bottom. And a few uh, Cherry Barbs. Kind of an understocked tank. If we go all the way to the bottom, We've got a bunch of um, blue Colombian tetras. And then we've got, I don't, we don't have them labeled. I'm gonna have to ask to get those labeled, but it looks like redhead Tapajo cichlids, but they're not labeled, so. And panda log suckers. I need to bring some of those home for sure. Another uh, Java fern on wood. All right, I'm gonna put some more tabs in because we haven't done the rest of the tanks because I don't want them to f polish it off before I get to them, but. You can kind of see all those masses of fish in the middle of the tanks. Those are all being eaten. All right, next up we've got the Black Neon Tetras, one of my absolute favorite. If you're a beginner, definitely love the Black Neon. They get a little bit larger, super duper hardy. Obviously, we've got Java Fern on wood. We've got Siamese Algae Eaters and some uh, Marble Hatchets in there. Down below here, we've got the Dwarf Neon Rainbow. And as you can see, they love the ONIP tab. Bunch of panda corridors down low. 
and a Pistogramma Agazizii double reds to finish that off. Down low, we've got tiger barbs, some greens and some normals. Obviously they love to eat good food, so they're on the chow down attack. Over here, this is a cool fish, the orange fin hill trout. They're very, very, very fast. Uh, I've considered adding, adding some of these to the 800 gallon. They're wicked fast though, and they can deny food if you're not careful. And then we've got a lot of uh, black phantom tetras. Looks like we're sold out of the red arc pencil fish that should have been in there as well. That's always a good thing to sell out though. And Java Fern Window Lava on Wood. Coming down here, Java Fern Window Lava on Wood with green fire tetras and Julie Cories and some Epistogramma Cockatoides Super Reds. And they're just chowing down and having a good old time. Down low, we've got lots of uh, Serpe Tetras. They obviously love the food. We've got some orange laser Corydoras rocking the bottom. And I think so. Oh, yeah, Garden Rye Achilles is a female, kind of right in the center there. And, oh, and there went a male. There he is. He's definitely getting his share of food. Next up, we've got a bunch of paradise fish. Good fish if you're going to start putting fish outside. Get a pair, start breeding them. I might even take an albino home, looking pretty darn cool. Got to admit, I like it. Got the dojo loaches and the leopard danios in there as well. Good combo. Moving up, we've got some red delta guppy pairs. And then we've got uh, emperor tetras, along with a bunch of salt and pepper corridoras and some sun... Uh, some honey grommies, sunset honey grommies. Up top, look at that, that's a mass of mollies right there mixed with giant danios going crazy with some floating water sprite and the uh, java fern. Next up, we've got Pristilla tetras and we've got some royal hill trout. These ones are not the orange finned and long fin cherry barbs mixed with some red tail sharks. This is a good looking tank. We sell a lot of fish out of this tank, as you can imagine. Electric Blue Rams. We've got the Epistogramma Cockatoides Orange Flash. And we've got Rummy Nose Tetras. And some Sturby Corridoras down low. What's not to like in that tank? That's a tank full of color. The Monk Tetra or the Red Eyed Tetra. Real, real hardy fish. They love Sarah Omno tabs, if you had noticed. And we've got the Albino Corridoras down low. This is like a great starter pack. Also got the, uh, the rubber lip pleco, if you watched our top fish to buy from uh, PetSmart. All right, I gotta load up some more root tab, or some more Sarah Onip tabs. All right, in this tank we've got German Blue Rams and Lucipinus, Synodonis Petricola, also known as, and Cardinals. These are all Dean's bred rams, in case you're wondering if you watched that video. Up above, we've got tons of glow light tetras, and they like to eat it and a snail that has algae, which is hilarious and awesome. Going down low, we've got a bunch of assorted endlers and a bunch of, uh, not Pandagara, but Gara Rufa, Rufagara. Next up, we've got some, uh, the redneck gold form of the Epistogramma McMasteri and green neon tetras. Kind of a cool fish. I hadn't seen the gold form before we started bringing it in. I'm sure it was around, I just hadn't seen it. Up here we've got uh, Rasbora, pork chop Rasboras, and a Pistogramma Borelli Blue. As you can see, they're chowing down. We've got the Anubius Nana Petite uh, in the bowls that we sell and reticulated hillstream loaches. Up top, these are the red angels or the red koi angels that Dean is breeding. We're trying to get them more and more black and red and get the white out of them mixed with some monk tetras. Next over, we've got uh, pearl garamis with purple rasbora hets and some um, Celebes rainbows. We've got one of my favorites, and this is the female powder blue garami. Just kind of a great fish to, you know, put her around your aquarium and offer a lot of blue. The female is much more docile than the, like the dwarf flames, that kind of stuff. We've got uh, Anubius Nana Petite in the bowl, and we've got a red fin black spot pleco. Oh, it just, it ran away, there it is. 
right there, L0191, L0, yeah, L091, sorry, not 191, just 91. Down below, we've got lots of platies. They're doing their platy thing, getting their eat on, and baby plecos. Next up, we've got some emerald iras boras. They're always a cool schooler, nice and tight, and some Siamese algae eaters, and a few chocolate Australia Achilles, but I think we're down to females. Next up, we've got the Bolivian Ram and normal Rasbora Hets. We've got some pinstripe Panak Plecos. They look to be hiding right in the back there. We'll see if we can get to zoom in. Yep, they're hunting for food. There's at least a couple in there, but I only see the one. Up top, we've got some of the guppies from Dean. These are the uh, Platinum Cobra Firetail, and we've got Siamese Algae Eaters, and we've got the Gold Ring Danios, as well as the uh, Luminatus Rainbow, the Red Neon. But look how big some of these females are. Dean's doing his job, making nice big guppies. Next up, we have Infinite Pristilla Tetras, good beginner fish. We've got a Placat Betta. I'm really taking a liking to this guy. I might take him home. I don't know, I just like him. And he's got that autosyncus right there. Are you going to bite that guy? No, you're a friend, aren't you? All right, he's nice. Next up, we've got tons of guppies again. i got to get more guppies in my life. And then we've got small pandagaras, and then we've got the blue cobalt gobies. These little guys need to color up still, but they are stunning when they do color up. Kind of an odd fish down here. We've got the black night paradise fish cool not very often seen and then we got juraparis kind of a sand sifter and a bunch of autosynclus over here we've got the pearl danio and some rosy barbs and sold out of barbatus quarries but this is all a cool water tank all cool water fish then we've got the classic neon tetra tank right next to the door with some albino quarries some starlight uh, bristle nose and you can see there some bamboo shrimp and, oh yeah, the Epistogram Borella I was like, where are they? These are not the, oh, these are the opals. The other ones were the blue ones. And then you've got your standard uh, zebra danios going to town. Now let's take a look at the plants. So here we go. We've got the plant sales tanks in the store. And they're all kind of purling at the moment. And uh, you can see here like this red ruby sword purling up a storm. You can see all the bubbles it's releasing. And just in general, let me zoom in and show you guys what I'm talking about. When plants are happy and they're releasing a lot of oxygen, it'll actually build up on their leaves. And you can see there, if I can keep zooming in on that, those bubbles. So that's going on. We've got pearl weed over here. And then we've got um, Crispus and Stargany Repens and Anubius Minima. This is where we test out all the plants before we decide if we want to ship them or not. You can see how much this Anubius is purling. Uh, really, really enjoying life. And then you got over here, like, oh my god, look at these plants, they're going nuts for this Onip tab, even they love to eat it. Oh wait, that's just one uh, auto, well, Siamese algae eater there. But the plants in here are looking good. The tiger lotus starting to put uh, leaves up to the top, you can see there, releasing lots of oxygen. And then you've got a Pontigate and Crispus, more of those, and then lots of Pogostem and Stellatus octopus. And, you know, recently a lot of people have been saying, like, oh, I didn't even know you guys sold plants. That's literally what the aquarium co-op was designed to do. I just spent so much time talking about other things because at the very beginning I talked about plants. I thought it was kind of overdone. Well, clearly not done enough. So that's where I'm bringing you guys along. Here's a water sprite. Someone recently asked me, how do I get it to grow the immersed form or the floating form? You just let it float and it will do that. I don't have a piece here right now, but if I did, I would definitely show it off. Uh, we've got some Italian Val over here, Perlin. Got the Crypt Spiralis. Man, we don't sell enough of these. They're one of my favorite plants to escape with. Uh, Crypt Lutea here. And yeah, just Anubius Nana Petite, some Crypts. Uh, we've got Anubius Golden Coin, some Dwarf Sag. Um, a new Hygro we're trying out. I, we want to see how it does in the store. Anubius Golden, some Dwarf Aquarium Lilies. Then we've got Scarlet Temple up here. Looks like, looks to be Perlin. It's a little bit higher up. Some Corkscrew Val. I didn't come in that well, so I don't know if we'll be carrying it. Uh, and then we've got Amania Gracilis. 
We've got some crinums. We've got Limnophilia aromatica. Starting to convert and get those pink tops, which is good. Um, yeah, and then over here, I guess I should set up the Sarah Onip tabs for the, uh, the tanks with all the nano fish because they really go nuts. They're really good for nano fish. And then we've got um, this planted tank over here. This, the whole goal with this tank is purely to teach people that there's no CO2 injection going on over here. So while it's not perfect, because we kind of farm and we sell stuff out, but we've got things like Pogostemon or not Pogostemon uh, erectus. We've got a lot of Val going on, a lot of neon tetras. We've got um, Wisteria here. We've got a little bit of Sawtooth Hygro and uh, Scarlet Temple. We've got some Bacopa in the back. We've got a Micrantha Lily that seems to be kind of wilting back at the moment, but uh, a Pontigetan, um it's not even Olvaceous. I can't remember the name of that one. It's one we don't get in very often. I'll have to think of it. Uh, but yeah, so none of this is high. It's not, it's not like high tech. It's low tech, meaning we just have good lights and we put some easy green in it. But that's all we're having to do. Down low, we've got discus. And, you know, we don't sell a whole ton of them. We'll go, we'll go through spurts. Uh, we'll see if these guys are eating this. This, was, this is what made me bring in the Sarah line is the rep came in. And he showed me discus that had never seen. He went to all my disc tanks and he fed this food. And it was not the blue color enhancing one, but the normal one. And all the discus would eat it. And that blew my mind. Because if you're a discus keeper, you know how hard it is to get them to eat uh, dry foods. But they seem to love it because the ingredients are high quality. And this one happens to increase or color enhance blue. They make one that color enhances red, and they make like it's a normal one too. I fed the normal one to all my guppies for a long time. I bought it in like the eight pound container, but you know nothing too crazy. We don't go you know crazy on discus or anything like that. But let me get these little nano tanks set up, and uh, you know we'll look at those. All right, so here we go. It's kind of a nano shrimp wall, that type of stuff, oddballs, all kinds of stuff, really. Uh, here we've got panda guppies, which are awesome, and we've got the pygmy spotted rasboras. And a lot of these nano fish are going to eat right below because they don't have the confidence to go and eat off of it. And we've got a bunch of blue velvet shrimp. Over here, we've got uh, Brigitte rasboras and some rosy loaches, pandagaras, and some golden or blonde frogs. So they're a much lighter color. Up top. We've got albino Congo tetras. We've got some of the clouded archers, like they're in my 800 gallon. Over here, we've got Amazon puffers. They came in tiny. They look like pea puffers, but they're still in quarantine, and we want to make sure they're super duper cleaned out and ready to go. So normally, I'll show you that. We normally have them in a quarantine room. Uh, these are extra large narrow leaf Java ferns. Uh, they should be selling faster than they are, but I've never told anyone we really have them, so maybe now people will buy them. Um, we've got a Pontigetan bovinianus in this tank. Lots of snails. When you guys order snails from us, uh, they some of them will come out from here, some will come from the warehouse on the other side. Got gold white clouds in here. And, uh, yeah, so there's lots of horned nerites. That's what all those little guys are. Olive nerites and uh, mystery snails. So... We got lots of mono shrimp and java moss. People always ask, why don't you sell java moss? We can't buy it commercially, so we have to rely on people that are local to make it for us. Same thing with the Christmas moss. We only carry enough to kind of supply in store. This tank, we've got lots of moss balls, a betta, some baby plecos, and orange shrimp with some blue silverado endlers. Not a bad little, little tank. Up top here, we've got some fun stuff. This is the leopard bush fish, Tenopoma leaf fish, and some Senegal bitchers, and then we've got a Tugluisii, I can never say that, biter. He's hiding right there. And we've got some uh, um, leaf fish, butterfly fish up top. Over here, we've got a bunch of Danio Chorpre and Threadfin Rainbows, and uh, a nice and fat um, Gara Rufa? Rufa, yeah, Gara Rufa, yeah. I keep wanting to say it backwards. More Needle Leaf Java Fern, and a Pontigetan, uh, or the Madagascar Lace Plant. Down low, 
We've got a betta chomping on it with some shrimp. You can see that cohabitating right there, shrimp in the betta. And he's going after the food. So he chooses food rather than that shrimp. And in this, in here, we have um, yellow shrimp with Norman Lampi Achilles. We've got the um, Habrosis Corridoras, elegant allergy eating gobies. Kind of some fun nano stuff. Over here, we've got Pygmy Corridoras having a, having a meal on the ONIP tab. We've got some Blue Star Endlers. And we've got Assassin Snails, Banana Plants, Cherry Shrimp. Down low, we've got Pea Puffers. They're just kind of getting their, you know, their thing on there to eat earlier. They don't eat dry foods. And then over here, you've got the Horde attacking the, uh, the ONIP tab. But let's take a look a little bit behind the scenes because this is what a lot of people want to see. You know, yeah, we've got Murphy, but the light's already out and that kind of stuff. And he's already taken a nap. You can see he already ate because we had lots of people come in and check him out all day long, which you can always check him out on the Murphy cam. You go to our website, aquariumcoop.com, 24 hours a day. Even right now, someone is watching me put my hand in front of the camera. But you can see he's got a big belly. So lots of people came and visited Murphy today. And we've got lots of guppy babies. Can you see all those babies? They go up top at night. And yeah, there's a big glare because I'm standing right here. But we've also got goldfish down low in each of the totes. A vintage soda machine where we sell uh, locally made sodas. And then if we go back in here, this is our fish quarantine room. So we land stuff back here, quarantine it, make sure it's ready to go outside. And we've got things like, here's a bunch of Celestial Pearl Danios that came in real small. So we got to feed them up. Here's a bunch of lemon tetras. Here's a bunch of rams. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we got a bunch of panda corridoras right here. And in general, just lots of cool stuff. Chocolate garamis, a lot of people haven't seen those before. So chocolate garamis, couple of tanks of cardinal tetras. Uh, looks like three tanks of cardinal tetras. We've got Dwarf Neon Rainbows, Rummy Nose Tetras, a big group of guppies. In here, we're putting through quarantine Shodenai Puffers. I saw them earlier when I was just checking up on them, but we put in a lot of hidey spots so they can hide from us. Of course, I can't see a single one right now when I need to on camera, which is always super annoying, but I don't want to, you know, stress them out just to see them. We've got some, uh, looks like platies in here with a little bit of bacterial infection we're clearing up. Some Brigitte rasboras. And then uh, rasbora hets. So kind of what's cool about this, this is a custom made system. Uh, every tank is individual, so nothing shares water. Each has its own sponge filter. They all change 50% water every day with the automatic water changer system over there. And this is how we land fish. We medicate them right away. We basically, there's neons, by the way, uh, right down there. We let them sit for a week. Then they go out on the sales floor. We've got some killies down here, I believe. Yep, some killies in quarantine. And so we're kind of throttled by what we can land in this room. Uh, this is the drop off when people go, hey, I don't want this fish anymore. Will you take it? We put it in here. Then we put meds to it. And then eventually they wind up outside in like the dollar bin. But lastly, I'm going to take you guys to the shipping side because it's been growing massively and, uh, you know, that's where we make our money. Ooh, look at those bristle noses. They all want a piece of that ONIP tab, all these males going after the ONIP tab. Uh, but I just want to show you so you guys know what you're seeing. The lights are going to be off and that kind of stuff, but you'll know what kind of quality you get when you're ordering from. It's like a lot of times people worry that the best plants are here in the, sh in the shop, but we just have tons of it. So you can see Jimmy there, he's filming. He's working on multiple videos right now. And, uh, you know, I just want to make sure that you guys know that we don't just cherry pick for the store or anything like that or vice versa. It's all quality all around. Um, so, yeah, we'll head over there. So we're right next door. You know, we got the store. Then we walk in. This is the warehouse side. We have multiple uh, rooms for the warehouse. Got some fans going because it's kind of warm in here. Right when you walk in, there's a computer and a packing station. So one person will be working there. Every day we have two packers working, sometimes three. So we have one person packing here. And on the other side, you'll have another person packing right here. You know, we got time clocks and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of times people think that we're not shipping that much. And really, I'm just banking everything I can on fast shipping. 
I, you know, I don't want to be the next Amazon, but I want us to compete with Amazon. So it's not uncommon that an, you place an order and we'll pack it an hour later. I mean, obviously, if it's in the middle of the night, we're not going to do that. But that's how we're set up. We have uh, people arrive early, 4 to 6 a.m. And what they start doing is they start getting all the plants ready. So we have them all ready to go for the day. And what we'll do is we'll grab what we need off these reports. So... Like today, uh, we needed three Anubias Nana Petite on a Friday, right? And we just grab all the plants we need. And, you know, on some days, like a Monday, that might have been 42 we needed of that. And so we get all the plants. We get them there, ready to ship. Today, I think we shipped 79 packages. We averaged somewhere between 70 and 100 a day. You know, especially on a Monday, it might be 200. Uh, but these are where all the plants live. So we've got, these are 40 breeders with a hang on back and we've got water running to a sump and we're auto dosing all of them. And so this is 16 40 breeders all filled with plants and we can't keep up with supply. So we built another 16 tanks, uh, 40 breeders, all filled with plants again. So this is a bunch of bulb plants. We have pogo stem and stellatus octopus down there. I apologize, the lights aren't on on the tanks because they're on timers. Um, but you can see here we've got like a bunch of pearl weed, we've got dwarf baby tears, we have Stargany repens, we have lots of Anubias, we have ruffle swords, uh, and all that's being run by auto dosers. We dose Easy Green, Easy Iron, and some Flourish Advance currently. You see here we're converting over a bunch of Scarlet Temple. And that all runs into this system where we're injecting CO2 and recirculating all through that. Same thing goes on over here. We have uh, the ability to get more going. So we've got one use, we could build three more lines, sump, uh, CO2 reactor again, and then more and more plants. You know, lots of java fern coming in big, which is nice. A lot of good looking Anubias down here. We've got, um, what is that, dwarf sag? Yeah, Sagittaria down there. Lots of Anubias Nana Petite, and lots of moss balls. We got the duckweed that we sell down there. We have lots of snails down here. And lots of crypts melting down for you guys to buy. These Amazon swords, they look tiny. They all came in huge, but they're all melted down. So these shouldn't melt when you order them. That's the good news. Uh, if you look over here, we've got all our like rock and wood and stone packs. So these, like if you were to order Dragonstone A03, you will get exactly this pack and you'll see the picture online that you get to buy. And we've got tons of that where we, you know, we probably upload 20 of these a day and we sell 20 a day. And then you've got hoodies and shirts and all that kind of stuff and all the dry goods. Uh, we're running a little bit low on some of the lights and that kind of stuff. We've got a lot of Fluval lights. Um, normally we're stacked all the way. We've got some more coming in. Uh, then you've got things like chemicals, you know, lots of that kind of stuff. Lots of foods. This is all Fluval food kind of going through here and we've, we've set it up as easy as I can for anyone to pack. We've got back stock up here and we carry other things too that I use at home. Like this is that discus food I was talking about. This would be the foods I feed my turtles. Um, you know, just lots of that kind of stuff. Uh, lots of rapashi food. We keep walking down lots of meds, lots and lots of meds. We sell quite a bit of those. We've got bio rings, air pumps, sponge filters. We sell a lot of sponges. Uh, we just finally got a shipment. We had to have it shipped in from another, from another uh, distribution center. We, we sold out West Coast, uh, but the Nano Fluval Light, we ordered 60, they only shipped 40. We put all of our outgoing packages there. We'll pack uh, all the way till we leave if they're dry goods. And then uh, if they're plants, normally we don't start uh, packing till the next day. Lots of boxes that we use paper towels, more and more boxes. And this is the shipping center. We take pictures of all the the packages that we want to ship out with this right here. And uh, so yeah, you know, we, we're, we're so lucky to have you guys support us. That's, you know, that's what we know. And so we work really hard and we try to always make it right. If you do have, you know, oh, that sound right there. I mean, someone just placed an order. Uh, if you do have a problem, send us an email. We always have it up. Right now we have three unanswered emails. Uh, that's just in the shipping, then we have the team, then we have my own, like we try to stay on top of as much as we can. Obviously when I'm filming, I can't be staying on top of it, but you know, 
hopefully you guys enjoy the tour. You got the warehouse in there too, and uh, hopefully you saw some fish that you like. You can go to your local fish store and try and buy some. And uh, yeah, hopefully, if you need something that they don't have, we can supply it for you. You know, here online or yeah, online on our website. We don't ship fish, but we do ship plants, snails, and dry goods. So basically, everything but fish will ship, except for some of the big canister filters. But hey. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you want to see next time when I do another tour. Is there something behind the scenes you want to see? And uh, we'll go from there.